we're back out in the C8 Corvette. Take a little drive. It's not raining. Weather's halfway decent, 55. So I thought we'd take a little advantage. So we're in a little different point, viewpoint today. We got her point of view. Cher, tell us what you think. I love it. So after being in a Lamborghini that you absolutely beat me to death on getting rid of. Um, tell me what your initial thoughts are of this compared to the Lamborghini. Is it quieter, easier to drive, the amenities? Tell me about what you think of the, the mirror, the visibility, the ease of drive. Tell me that kind of stuff. Easy to drive. You just commented off camera before I turned this on about the rear view camera. Uh, give me your thoughts on that and what you've had it in before. The rear view camera is excellent. Get a very large view. Yeah, we had this in our uh, Cadillac CTSV, which is the first car we had with it, which we had before this. But uh, it basically, I'm not going to do it now, but anyway, it gives you a full wide view 180 view camera which is fabulous uh, you can see it there what do you think of things like the uh, seat settings um, I know one thing that drove you nuts I'm gonna see if you remember now about the uh, Lamborghini I'm six foot three and Sherry's five foot two but what was the biggest pain in the butt about getting out of the Lamborghini from one car one person to the other no memory no memory seat. I will say that was a pain in the tuchus. <clears throat> so, first thing Sherry commented when she got in here is uh, the memory seat. So, very nice feature. Uh, it remembers everything from the mirror settings, seat settings, radio settings, steering wheel. Uh, the other big thing is the, tell us about the steering wheel adjustment that you hated so much in the Lamborghini. Well, you had to down under here. Yeah, that was a pain. Uh, this is all electric, up and down, and also uh, telescoping, which is a nice little feature. Now, mind you, I'm not sitting here beating up on the Lamborghini. I'm just getting her viewpoint on this particular car. Um, there's a lot of things to love about the Lamborghini. Uh, just differentiating it as we move from the Lamborghini to the C8 Corvette. Sure, while we're sitting here driving, what other things attract you or detract you from this car? Anything stand out? No. Nothing like the, uh, I know you've asked me about this summer stock. How does it feel from the uh, driver's side for you? I don't get a lot of comments on the internet, it's just kind of curious what your thoughts are on it. So a little bit more on her point of view, and this could be my her, being my wife, or it could be your wife, or it could be somebody that's walking down the street. So a um, few things that people always want to know, and uh, curious about your comments on, Sherry. Uh, do you think this car is exotic looking or do you think it ranks up there with supercars? And I know you've been around supercars with us and our relationship and our friends, but uh, what's your thoughts on the Corvette as a supercar or as an exotic car for that matter? I think it looks very exotic looking. Do you think it ranks up there after driving the AMG and after driving the um, Huracan and been in several other uh, cars with our friends, McLarens and Porsche GT2s and stuff like that, Terry's cars. Um, how do you feel it ranks in the supercar world? I think it does, I just don't think it's as loud. Okay. Um, one of the things that people always come out on in supercars is that it's probably made too many of them. So we'll probably agree, you and I, on this, but uh, I think it probably qualifies as an exotic car, but maybe not as a supercar because it's not. Um, 
limited enough. Like the, the Huracans are, you know, five, seven thousand a year. The GT2 RS with a Y sock edition is a 500, 750 car a year car. So this probably, because it's so quote attainable, as I heard somebody use, probably makes it a little less of a supercar. Would you agree? Somewhat, but there's still not that many out yet. That's true. That is very true. As it comes forward, now there are 20,000 of them this year in 2020, and uh, the next year they're projecting 40,000. So it'll be interesting to see. So I'm going to expand on some of her thoughts on the car. Um, I really like C8. I'm a Corvette guy through and through, if you know me. Uh, I know I haven't done a whole lot of videos specifically on Corvettes over the years. I've been doing YouTube now for about two years, actually three years, 2017. And uh, those of you who know, you've seen my, my uh, C3 Corvette race car. It's a uh, A production small block Chevy. Uh, I run in uh, Sports Car Vintage Racing Association, uh, SBRA. Uh, pretty successfully. It's been a good car. I've had uh, innumerable Corvettes, my oldest one being a 1962, or sorry, 1966. And um, always loved Corvettes. My first one was a uh, 77. Bought that one in 1987. A friend of mine, Mark Reif, got me deep into Corvettes. I was sports cars, Lotuses, Triumphs, etc., for a long time. And uh, a friend of mine, Mark Reif, had a 1963 C3 Corvette that was uh, a hell of an autocross and solo one car as well. Uh, he ran it in NCCC, National Council of Corvettes, um, car and campaigned it very successfully and then uh, he got into HSR, Brumar got me into it and then uh, kept getting more and more of them. Uh, had a bunch of, uh, probably most I've ever had is uh, of any one version is the C4s, an 85, and a 90, 91, 92, 94, 96, I had a 90 ZR1, um, I had a bunch of those. A couple of C5s, uh, two convertibles, uh, Sherry had two coupes uh, over time. We've had two C7s, had one C51, and then had a Grand Sport, and then um, moved into this C8. But uh, very happy with it in comparison to cars, uh, other Corvettes. Obviously, it's progressed tremendously, but uh, one of the big things. Uh, people today compare them to are they a supercar or an exotic car as I mentioned earlier in this video in another clip uh, I don't think it fits into the supercar realm mostly because they're gonna make too many of them now there are things that make it a very competitive car to the supercars performance wise I think it's going to be every bit as competitive as a supercar uh, people have already proved that uh, in some other videos whether that's Speed Phenom or whoever. A lot of guys, Randy Popes has tested the car. Uh, it's very competitive. It's done a uh, hot lap at Virginia. Uh, surprisingly, nobody's really turned any laps loose with it um, at the Nürburgring um, to really set a fast time with it. Uh, I know there's been some times out there, some projected times. I don't think there's been one perfect, um, specific time set by Chevrolet yet. Here's my opinion of how it fits in the supercar realm. Um, most recently, not most recently, but recently we had a 2019 Liberty Huracan uh, 580-2, two-wheel drive version, 580 horsepower. Pretty well loaded up, had the high-spec interior, 
uh, we had the front end lift. Uh, I think we had, I'm trying to think what we didn't have. I think it was high, pretty well as high spec as you can get for a uh, Huracan that is not a Performante and not the Evo. Uh, we got ours in uh, middle of 19. It was pretty much the last of the 19s without the Evo spec before it moved on to the Evo spec. So pretty easy comparison for us. Um, for me personally, just with options, um, as Sherry commented, the power seats were a big thing. I'm 6'2", 6'3", Sherry's 5'2", and uh, we both drove the car. She probably drove a little bit more than I did just to drive around. I did track day at once. Uh, we do a lot of events with our local club, uh, a lot of high-speed stuff, and just monkeying around. But um, uh, I would say that from a drivability standpoint, it's as easy to drive. Uh, it's clearly not as fast, 580 horsepower, which I think is probably underrated in Lamborghini, plus it's a V10. Plus it had that aura of supercar, um, mostly because of its history. The V10 felt gruntier, but the transmission reactions and response were very similar. Um, I think the finishes in the Huracan are very similar. This has got more leather in different places and a little bit nicer finishes in my humble opinion on some of the things than the Huracan. The stereo is better, the electric steering adjustment, telescoping and tilting steering wheel I think is huge. The memory seats were huge. Uh, as I said, I think the stereo is tremendously better. Uh, the um, rear view camera in the mirror versus just a regular camera. It pans out probably 160 degrees, which is a huge benefit if you're driving a supercar, if you've ever driven one. I think a lot of people who have compared Corvettes who are done reviews on Corvettes are probably press people and may not have had a supercar or have not driven the Corvette as a daily car. Um, other than there's a lot of YouTubers who have gotten the Corvette and a lot of have gotten them to modify them. And we will do some of that as well. Uh, I'm already looking at wheels and tires. I don't know if I'm going to do exhaust. I haven't decided about that yet. So here we are in the Corvette. And it's a very nice place to be. Uh, people have commented on this. And I don't necessarily believe what everybody's saying. I don't think that's not intrusive, either from the passenger side or from the driver's side. And mind you, again, I mentioned I'm very tall, so I'm kind of over it, uh, but Sherry doesn't get bothered by it on the passenger side, and I don't think it makes that much difference in the driver's side whatsoever. And if you're familiar, they started designing this car in its final form in 2011, and if you're familiar with the C7, it's not too differently laid out from the interior. The, this whole assembly is tilted towards you in the C7. And in addition, if you're familiar with the C7, there's a grab handle here, which kind of lends you to what's going on with this. Uh, I'll show a picture of it here. But the uh, C7 handle is not that much different. It's already, they're already leading you to believe that this is coming. Now, I understand this is structural, uh, which is part of it. Um, if you're familiar with the top of this, top of the dash, in these cars, again in the uh, C7, it was very similar. So I don't want to bore you guys to death with this, but I did think there were some things that were important to point out. Again, uh, the center divider, for lack of a better term, with all the controls in it. The um, facing the um, center console and the screen towards the driver, and again a lot of these. Um, different although they're a little bit different um, layout internally within the LED uh, within the display uh, it's a very similar display to what was in the C7 so it was transitional uh, from the C6 uh, into the C7 as far as the overall layout of the car but they knew the C8 was coming when they put the C7 out and I think they adapted some of these so that you get used to it one of the things that drives me banana cakes is clowns griping about the square steering wheel and um, it really is 
very adaptive. It's very easy to use. If I had a complaint about the steering wheel, it would be that the paddles are not a little bit bigger. Um, they're not a big deal, but when you are crossing over, uh, it's a little bit hard to hit the paddle when you have your arms crossed over on the steering wheel. But uh, short of that, I don't have any gripes at all about the steering wheel. So those are some of my opinions, some of my wife's opinions on the Corvette, and I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and uh, can share it a little bit. Hit that uh, like, subscribe, and uh, hit that notification bell. And uh, please feel free to comment below. I look forward to hearing what you have to say. And happy holidays to everybody. And look forward to another download here on the Corvette. And we'll get some more stuff on our GTO and some of the other cars we've got going on. Happy holidays, everybody. Uh -huh.